Welcome to Show Studio's live panel discussions, where experts from across the industry come together to talk about the most important Fashion Week shows of the season. Today, we'll be talking about Jean-Paul Gaultier's Haute Couture Collection by Simone Rocha. Uh, I'm Benji Park. I'm a fashion journalist and content creator, and we have our lovely panel with us this evening, this afternoon. Um, we'll start from Molly and work our way in. Molly? Hi, I'm Molly. I'm an artist and creative based here in London. Hi, I'm George Medley. I am a fashion editor and a stylist, also based in London. Hi, I'm Jawara Aline, and I'm a fashion designer, also based in London. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Amber Pinkerton, and I'm a photographer and visual artist based in London. Fab, so we're all based in London. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, right, let's go for some initial comments. Does anyone have anything, like any sort of burning initial reactions when you saw this, when you saw the collection on Vogue Runway or whatever? What, what were the initial thoughts? Very Simone. Yeah, yeah very so Simone. Simone. Even the, to the colour palette. One thing that I actually love about Simone is that she has her um, USP or her mm. identity, you yeah. know, and... Every collection that she does, um, she really does stick to that and you see it, but then she develops it in ways that kind of you wouldn't yeah. ever know or see. So I love that she just remains true to herself um, in what she does, but then still, you know, pushes her creativity. Mm. Yeah. From a stylist's perspective, is that sort of narrative thread particularly useful? Yeah, I like it when I think, I think it's good when somebody has a point of view and mm. sticks to it. Mm rather than kind of going across multiple different avenues. You know what you're kind of going to get with Simone, but then it's yeah. nice to see when she pushes it. Like when she did, I think there was one collection that she did in London a couple of seasons ago where she used um, the straw and the hay. Yeah. I actually cried at that show. Yeah, that was really beautiful. The manipulation, what she did, I can't remember what season it was, but it was just so stunning. I, that was a sh show that I actually cried at. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah, there it is. in a way that yeah. with this, you know, she's been around now for some time and mm. it's still, I don't know, her visuals are so strong, yeah. but they still feel fresh. Like, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. almost feel like at times I worry, how is she going to keep yeah, kind of going? <laughs> because it's so, it's so um, mm. distinctive, but mm -hmm. it still feels fresh. I don't know, it still feels, it always feels Simone, it always mm -hmm. looks visually mm. like her language but she always finds some sort of innovation that makes it yeah, new yeah. each time i suppose yeah. really that's the mark of a good designer exactly mm. yeah the, i think the the thing i love about her like whenever i think of something that i would want to put on i think of her because i enjoy the way in which she thinks about the woman's body in a way mm. that's sexy but you can be comfortable in it mm -hmm. and you're not too conscious of yeah. your body. I think in this collection, um, there's kind of something for everyone. There's someone who wants to show more skin. There's, mm -hmm. someone, there's something for someone who wants to be a bit more covered up. Yeah. And what I like about her is when I think about Simone, I think about maybe like flowers, um, ribbons, mm -hmm. pearls, crystals. And I enjoy the way in which each, in every collection, I love the way in which she continues to challenge herself. Mm. Mm. And she finds, you know, she never uses the same material in exactly the same, same way. way. Like yeah. in this collection, the flowers, for example, Beautiful. now turning into an earring that's really three dimensional mm. and is going in all these different vector points or mm. the, the way she would, um, turn the taff taffet, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but mm. into that yeah. warped floral shape. And then mm. now she's, she's used um, Jean's sculpt, mm. but in her own way, that's kind of reminiscent of the conical bra, yeah. but, mm. but it's also like an ode to the petals, mm. in yeah, her, her the warped brand, petals yeah. in her feet previous collections mm. and the ribbons as well like the way they're draped mm. um, the way it turns from airing to makeup to mm. she always just finds a really innovative way to use the same thing and it keeps it really fresh mm. 
I think that yeah. feels particularly poignant at a time when I know like lots of the discussions we're having in fashion at the moment and the outsider's perspective with the British Fashion Council yesterday just published their mm. DEI report and you know one of the big conversations we're having at the moment is male white male designers going mm. to big women's mm. houses mm -hmm. and designing for the female form and designing yeah. for female consumers mm -hmm. and there's obviously we've established there's nothing inherently wrong with male designers designing yeah. for women mm. But when it feels like it's such a pattern with mm -hmm. Sabato Gucci and then mm -hmm. Shauna McQueen and all of these exactly. new appointments, I feel like Simone really stands out as a woman designing Absolutely. for women. Definitely. And Definitely. women want to wear Simone in a way yeah. that I don't feel that my female friends talk about mm -hmm. some of the big houses in the same way in terms yeah. of how they feel when they put it on. Obviously, Jawara, as a designer, is that sort of empowerment of your consumer a particularly crucial thing yeah, to, to take into account. It's everything. Yeah. Like the, the, the person that you're designing for and mm. how you actually manage to capture that consumer mm. in a way that's actually genuine and honest, yeah. um, such that you can like Simone Rocha's per, uh, point of view or perspective, her aesthetics or not, but the clothes that she designs are so specific to the point of view that she wants to bring across. Mm, yeah. mm. And I think that's what is so successful in this show as well, um, is that actually Simone is a designer who's, de who's a, a designer. You yeah, know, she's exactly. not coming to be a creative director to import yeah. and to impart an idea onto this house that is so referential that it goes so far outside of what she proposes mm. as, a, as, mm. a, as a sort of language of design that she's mm. sort of developed. Mm. Um, for me, I think she's, She's someone like um, Tom Brown in that yeah. the, the point of view and the aesthetics is Absolutely. so clear. And yeah. mm -hmm. each time she shows, like you're, you're questioning, oh my God, where are you going to take Thank this you. next? And each yeah. time she actually so um, sends her very clear sort of motifs and aesthetics and, and fabric choices into a realm that sort of expands that and, and, mm -hmm. and sort of pushes that. And mm -hmm. For me, like as a designer, it's, it's so clear to see that Simone is a designer that's designing from a designer's point of view and yeah. having developed yeah. sort of like a design yeah. uh, theory that, and philosophy that kind of takes her throughout her brand and mm -hmm. takes her into this space of stepping into somebody else's house, somebody else's codes, but doing it in a way that feels genuinely yourself mm. um, and still sort of like pulling out those Jean-Paul Gaultier motifs that yeah. sometimes because they're, they've been so successful can become so referential. I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, but with her, the way that she's sort of approached this is so subtle mm. um, and it's exactly what you would expect for someone who's so sensitive yeah. with her work. You get the sense that she had fun doing it yeah, too. Yeah, definitely. Like, there was yeah. a lot of, there's a sense of play mm. almost like with yeah, the resources of a couturier, she was mm. like, okay, like, what are we yeah. gonna yeah. make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's definitely. always like really good with com combining this balance of soft and hard. Absolutely. Yeah. Like sensitive, mm -hmm. but melancholic at the same time. Mm. Yeah. Um, even in, I think, the, the ma again, the materials. I think mm. she's really good with materials and the kind of discourse between them. Mm. Mm. I think Simone's one of the few designers who, who talks about embodying femininity, who mm. actually does. Mm. Mm. Lots Absolutely. of designers spend yeah. a lot of time about yeah. embodying femininity and actually what they just portray, what they just portray is elements of the female form yeah. yes. and often quite a hypersexualized version mm. of it. They it's think that, like that yeah. cinched waists mean femininity or mm. all of these accentuated things mean mm. femininity. But a big general comment that people often and consumers have, which is important because I think we often talk about fashion from our perspective, which yeah. is mm. the industry perspective, yeah, but it's yeah. important to remember that Simone is obviously a ready-to-wear brand mm. outside of this, so mm -hmm. her consumers also echo that, is how much they feel like she actually captures the essence of what it means mm. to be a Simone Rocha mm. girl or a Simone mm. Rocha woman. She really gets that women should have beautiful things mm -hmm. and women should have trinkets too the crystals yeah, the bows it's pretty yeah. Yeah. beautiful beautiful yeah. trinkets but then she does incorporate you know there was i think it was either last season or the season before you know where she brings in the bomber jackets yeah. and all of these yes. different other things and layers and elements where there is that androgynous or Mm. masculine element but without counteracting the feminine mm. it's, it's mm. really beautiful how she does it she's very subtle what you're saying Gerard, she's just like so subtle in this approach to um, Gautier mm. with the corset tree and it's not so literal yeah. she's done it in such a beautiful way 
And she was talking about how she wanted this to be a collision mm. between the two houses. It is, yeah. I think it's an interesting, I feel like we're, maybe two years ago we were stuck on the word collaboration. It was like, mm. Louis Vuitton <laughs> yeah. collaboration with Nike, Gucci <laughs> collaboration with Adidas. Yeah. Like, you couldn't open Not a magazine things. without someone creaming about collaboration yeah. and it was yeah. just True. such overload. But I like this idea of collision because it feels more organic because mm. it is about two worlds colliding. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily about them falling into sync inherently. It's very yeah. much about two Where designers with distinct DNAs, one subordinating for each other, yeah. but properly coming together. Mm. Do we feel like she captured Jean-Paul Gaultier Simone in equal measures or that perhaps this was more one than the other? I don't think so, but then I started to really question whether, whether that's important. Mm. Like when I watched it, my it's immediate true. reaction was, oh, I see more Simone than Jean-Paul Gaultier. Mm. Um, but then I started to, to question, actually, maybe that's a that's good the thing. That's yeah. Because yeah. Jean-Paul Gaultier so. over the years has been so successful that yeah. it's really actually, it's harder to create something under his name that doesn't just reference what he's done before. Yeah, before, yeah. That's a really good done point. so yeah. much yeah. that it's like, yeah. okay, how are you going to reinvent the cone bra and the corset, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. immediately, Yours. visually, Simone, yes. simultaneously, exactly. Yes. Exactly. using those DNAs without it being like, that's just it feels like that was yeah. the, like a flower yeah. on yeah. the cone bra, but actually mm -hmm. being like, no, 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 I see that, and I do think Simone, and then I think yeah. it's referential to yeah, this. Yeah, it's a good idea. I think the points in this collection that are more successful for me now, looking at it a, a couple of times, are the ones that immediately scream her, and then yeah. subtly as well, yeah. Jean-Paul Gaultier mm -hmm. starts seeping through. Mm -hmm. What did we think about the accessories? Because I've seen quite a lot of discussion about these online. Um, I, the shoes specifically. Oh my god, I was obsessed with the shoes. First, I love the accessories. Oh, I would yeah. be wearing obsessed. all of those accessories yeah. Yeah. right now if I could. The glass. Because oh, Kylie god. Jenner wore the shoes, mm. I think. I think she was wearing those shoes front row. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. about. Kelly yeah. Rutherford, who I just love. I know. I just think it's she's the best. Um, but obviously, these are points that can go direct to consumer because this collection, I think, whilst I was watching it, Incredible, gorgeous, I loved it. There were points where, because it was so Simone, I felt like I was watching a Simone show and maybe mm. I slightly forgot that this is haute couture. Mm -hmm. And when you think we had Scaparelli so recently with like mm. the motherboard embroidery, mm. incredible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one wonders which consumers will buy this more. Is it gonna be Simone's VIPs or Jean-Paul Gaultier's VIPs? Mm. Mm. Which I think is quite interesting because in the past with like Julian de Senna for Jean-Paul Gaultier, I was like, yeah. it's so Jean-Paul. Yeah. I think his old VIPs are literally just gonna be like, yeah. I'll drop 50 grand on this mm -hmm. dress or whatever. But it will be interesting to see who her consumers yeah. are. Mm. I think there is something kind of in there for each. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, everyone. Because yeah. you've, you've got the tailoring in there. You've got the, you know, the simplicity in there and the corsetry and but then you have, you know, the romanticism and the feminine elements for Simone's mm. um, customer too. Yeah, I think it, there's a fair balance. And once you maybe pick it apart, mm. the collection rather than seeing them as just the full looks, once you start to break up the pieces as individual mm. pieces, mm. I'm sure there's something in there for, for everyone. Well, I, I think it definitely also, I mean, it's obviously sexier yeah. than mm. what she would usually do because yeah. I think yeah. she usually does sexy in like a slightly modest way. I mean, you have the references with the harnesses mm. and the material and, mm. the, the, you know, it's kind of like a bit kinky, mm. but I think this one is more Jean-Paul Gaultier in the sense that you know, the, the silhouettes of the pieces, yeah. there's more legs, there, everything is shorter, it's not as oversized as usual. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think she's done, it, it's like a really beautiful cross-pollination. Mm. And I don't think, I think she's doing the perfect thing. If, mm -hmm. if you have access to um, a house and the tools of that place, I think this just shows you what 
you know, even more so what she's capable of. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely sure. heightened even more right. than before, Agreed. which yeah. she does every time. Agreed. Because I also feel like immediately when I, when I saw it as well, I started to think about, <clears throat> as a designer going into a house, mm. um, how do you use that opportunity? Mm. Is it to just yeah. use that opportunity to pay homage to the house, mm. or is it to yeah. use those resources to create something under your name that you wouldn't have been mm. able to do yeah. on your yeah. own? Yeah. Something that still sits so closely within mm. your own body of work, mm. you know, that isn't just, oh, I did this thing one time, yeah. but actually, you look at it as yeah. a whole. Especially because it's like a one shot, mm. like free for all almost. Mm. Mm -hmm. No rules, guess, just go. Uh, I guess that's why they pick the people that they pick, or they would, you know, if, for example, you, Gerard, if you were to go in somewhere, they would pick you because of what you do mm -hmm. as an individual, yeah. mm -hmm. as a designer. So they're interested in your body of work, what you, your point of view. Mm -hmm. So I think it's so important that, yeah, that you would use that opportunity to express what you do, but subtly translate it into their, into their house, mm -hmm. for sure. I think also with Simone, it's more important for this collection to feel like her because it's an eponymous brand mm -hmm. that's still in business. Yeah, yes. true. true. She is actually like, you know, we know how fickle fashion is. Mm. You've got to keep it going. Mm -hmm. You think 20 years ago about designers who we were like, they're incredible, and yeah, how many no. of them aren't around yeah, well, anymore? Mm -hmm. um, especially considering she operates within the UK and yeah. we're in like a terrible economy and yeah. a post-Brexit mm -hmm. post economy mm -hmm. here. Um, I think it's someone like Julian DeSena perhaps has, I don't want to say the shield because I, I don't want it to sound derogative, of Paco Rabanne, mm. Jose Abbe with Sakai, mm. even mm. Heider Ackerman, like he's stepped back after a yeah. really huge career where he can sort of rest on his laurels and experiment a bit more. Mm -hmm. Olivier Roustiang had Balman, whereas mm. Simone was almost quite exposed with this collection yeah. because it's her, it's mm. her name on the door, mm -hmm. and it's the brand that still supports herself and her family. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. there's more, and she's not owned by like a Kering or yeah. an LVMH or a That's major true. conglomerate. I know they have investment, but mm. it really is her heart on her sleeve. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something quite beautiful about that, mm. especially for it to have mm. come across so gorgeously, yeah. to be infused so well. Which I think as well is why it's so important to, to have spaces in fashion that actually are diverse because it yeah. allows for different ways of approaching mm -hmm. a project or, or sort of like taking on a house. Like you need actually people who are coming from different, different points of life, different yeah. backgrounds, different ways of thinking about mm -hmm. what they choose to bring yeah. to the world of fashion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's your point of view of the world. It's interesting, mm -hmm. right? You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. The sense I got from that. people who were there is that to have been in the room with the music and the, the clothes in motion, mm. and then Simone herself coming out at the end in tears. I mm. think it, it feels like the whole show is actually very, very emotionally charged mm. to you. So you probably Personal. did get a sense of mm. that, like this is her, as you say, wearing her heart on her sleeve yeah. and pouring herself into something. Mm. And really that's what good couture does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, good ready to wear, one needs to be able to envisage themselves wearing the clothes outside of the show setting. Yeah. I mean, I know all of us will have been to shows where you leave and you think like, that was bloody cool, but mm. Can't wear if it. I wasn't yeah. walking yeah, yeah, through yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> in the south of France, it. yeah, <laughs> it's probably not gonna look as good yeah. in like, Brixton on a Thursday, yeah. do you know what I mean? When you leave a show and the set has superseded yeah. the clothes itself for yeah. ready to wear. Whereas for couture, really what these designers are manufacturing is like the absolute pinnacle of a consumer's dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fantasy. Tens of mm. thousands of pounds. Mm -hmm. The ateliers to qualify to be considered a couture by the Chambre Syndicat de la Couture comes with a huge um, criterion to mm. fill of certain collections, certain ateliers, certain yep. qualifications. So this really does feel like the pinnacle of what Simone wants mm -hmm. to portray. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I did read, she said in an interview that she wanted to um, strip Every, set wise strip yeah. everything that was his hence why she you know kind of paid homage with the aluminum foil mm. looking floor in mm. relation to the bottle and she wanted to keep it just very industrial and mm. I love I love that floor yeah. I think it's yeah. beautiful and feels very like futuristic yeah. as well mm. and she always speaks about I mean I think that's what keeps her curiosity she's always talking about 
being in the now or moving into the future. And I think you see that every time. I mean, even those those bun earrings are so fun. Yeah, she's just so playful. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, Yeah. she's really playful. Not afraid, not fearful. Amber, going back to your point about the set, I also feel like the big, heavy, I think it's velvet velvet, curtain at the back. Mm -hmm. And this we have a beautiful bridal finale and she looks very haunting. And one of the things that I feel Simone is always referencing is ballet and stage as well. Mm. You have a lot of yeah. like ballet That's slipper true. pink mm. and sort of tiny cinched waist and then beautiful mm. day garb ballet mm-hmm. skirts. And when the looks are leaving the runway, they kind of disappear behind the big velvet curtain. It mm. feels yeah. like mm. stage yeah. a related, play, yeah. doesn't it? It's yes. very theatrical, True. yeah, subtly. Yeah. And an eeriness. Lots mm. of those moti- motifs with Simona, I was quite worried that TikTok could wear thin, like <laughs> coquetti core and like bows and pearls. <laughs> and you see designers who like, I know we laugh at it, but actually whose aesthetics are completely robbed by a TikTok trend cycle. Yeah. They haven't even realised that it's happened yet. Yeah. And then like six months later, people are like, no, that's so out. Yeah. I speak to designers all the time who are like, it's I terrifying. had no idea that like, yeah like grandma coastal had gone like <laughs> as a micro trend on TikTok mm-hmm. and now people feel like they've already seen my stuff. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Simone's completely mm. weathered that storm because mm. she, she feels like an entity intellectualized in her own right. I do also love Sadie Lang to be fair and she's, I think she's a really great designer yeah, but Sandy she Lang. is one who TikTok kind of wore out a bit actually because yeah. it pushed the aesthetic so much that was centralized to her DNA, mm. Mary Jane's and like Bo's. Accidentally became yeah, a micro trend. Ac- yeah. She accidentally became a trend. Yeah. Um, which I think is kind of crazy that we live in that world where like within three months, like yeah, you can sell out all of your sort stock. Of danger of such hypersaturation. Hypersaturation, yeah, the appetite scary. for it is so strong. Mm. Um, coming back to the collection, were there any particular looks that stood out or that felt particularly poignant to any of you? I actually really wanted to talk about the, the iconic ribbon interpretation of the Marinier. I know that it was used as a promotional image, yeah. mm. but for me, this was the success story yeah. of the mm-hmm. show, just okay. because it's the probably the perfect meeting point marriage mm-hmm. between mm-hmm. Simone and, and Trump, JPG. Yeah. And what is so clever about Simone's use of ribbons and bows is that they never feel um, stiff or formal. It's always, particularly with this piece, it's like an unraveling and it's Mm. the sensuality of the looseness Mm. and the Mm. the cheekiness of it and Mm. something sensual about a ribbon sort of unraveling and falling to the ground and trailing behind. It feels Mm. like boudoir. Mm. Yeah, it does. It feels. Yeah, and it, I think it would have been very easy to just do like a classic stripe. I agree. Breton and do it with yeah. ribbons. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, she's done it the sheerness. It feels like yeah, lingerie. Exactly. It's like, it feels, yeah, exactly. Honestly, such, such a such, touch. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. And it's referential of spring summer two thousand and seven. Yes. I think if um, for the, for the kind of Breton mix up because I think it's important to look at it. I've, what we had with the previous guest designers like Julian De Senna and Heide Ackerman was perhaps slightly more on the nose referential mm, pieces, yes. mm. which is love very, it, that can be brilliant because it means when you look at the collection, you immediately feel a reminiscence, you immediately feel a reaction. Oh no, maybe it was 1997, maybe we're going way back. <laughs> um, uh, but you feel that immediate affinity. And I think that's mm. what's nice about Simone is it feels like a more intellectualized approach. It feels like a more coded approach. Mm. Mm. Um, There was also one look, I mean, look nine, that was, for me, quite evocative of Loewe. Yeah, Yeah. agreed. As soon as I saw saw the top, the bridge was like, I saw Simone, Jonathan, two Irish designers, two designers who are now, I mean, Simone's obviously designing, Simone Rocha now is a big house, and Jonathan Anderson for Loewe. I felt like, I don't know, it felt like there was almost quite a nice little compatriot yeah. Yeah. crossover. Yeah. Venn diagram. Yeah. yeah, like a Venn diagram. Interestingly, I read that the roses were um, because Lily Cole, who is apparently a mutual friend of both of theirs, was saying that Jean-Paul used to give out roses to the models at the Aww. shows. And so she decided to include it as a motif 
yeah, as like a, a token almost. Mm -hmm. That's so yeah, gesture. Yeah, really, it's really beautiful. What was the show invite like? Do any of us know? Did we see no, it? No, yeah, just because I saw Robert friend. ones today and it was yeah, like I've got that. with a little wet look and th yeah. there a perfume oh. in it. Yeah, it's got a little scent. It's like a tiny little yeah perfume. I haven't smelled That's it. That's another exciting yeah. one. Um, <laughs> and then the final look for Simone's collection, I think, was quite poignant as well because I mean we often end collections with the bride. Mm. You know, you think about like the Lagerfeld yeah. bride and mm, things like that. Bride. John Galliano did it very well, but. Mm. Um, Jean Paul Gaultier did it well as well, and their 30, there was a 36th look collection, and the 36th look was this like very sh sort of shrouded mm, white haunting, veil. Ghostly. Yeah, quite haunting. I thought it was a Giselle reference. I could be way off here, but mm. particularly with her ballet yeah. interests, there's the second half, the second act of Giselle is when she's died of a heartbreak and a madness, and the, the, she basically, the curtain lifts and she's a ghost. Yeah. And she floats around and she and all the other like dead virginal brides are in shrouds, like in these really haunting, like ghostly tulle yeah. veils. Mm. And they kind of float about the stage and the whole dance is very, very haunting. Yeah. Mm. And it, it, it felt to me like a like nod that. to that for mm. sure. And spring, summer, I think 98. Think this is the tricky thing about giving references because last time I yeah. was like in 2007, <laughs> yeah, yeah, someone in the like, comments was like right. 2007. Yeah. When were you born? Like, <laughs> I was six in 2007. I'm sorry, yeah. I wasn't looking at oh Jean Gaultier in collection. the 90s. <laughs> sorry, um, but there, I, I, I think it's one of the final looks for this collection, spring summer, mm. um, where we where we got the bride. Oh yeah, look, there we. I was right. <laughs> I hope you're happy. Nice. Um, and I think that's Lily Cole as well, actually, it which is, is quite yeah. interesting. Oh, is that no, Lily Cole? It's not, it's not. No. She has a look of very um, similar look. But very reminiscent. And I quite like a slightly more coded reference. I think it feels, mm. it, it's more interesting. It's nice to have Easter eggs in collections. It's nice to borrow yeah. through. Not pull them. from exactly. an archive, right? If you're doing yeah. a guest spot at yeah, someone else's to. house. Yeah. That's like a nice tradition to keep as well, mm. I think, as like a guest designer. He, he looks so beautiful. Nice. What I find to be very interesting about um, this whole project of, of um, people each season coming into this mm. house is mm. design is in crisis. Um, there's not much that's really sort of being pushed within the space of just fashion Agreed. globally, yeah. Yeah. Um, which is quite sad because, mm. you know, when you think of like, us as fashion lovers growing up, like it was such a, a space that you looked to for inspiration. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but what I find to be interesting about this, this project, I hope that it lasts because with each sort of collection and with each designer coming in, you get a different point of view and a different mm. sort of case study on design, essentially. Mm. Mm. Um, a way that sort of a, a person can um, sort of impart a point of view, mm. uh, essentially, and, and tell a story, mm. um, which are the things that are kind of missing within fashion. It is mm -hmm. like bringing a point of view, telling a story, that's having it. something that's quite sort of bringing you into the future, mm. also design that serves a purpose as well. Yeah. Um, mm. And I think inevitably this collaboration um, forces you with each sort of combination of designers to, um, to add something within the fashion landscape that mm. otherwise at this current point in time can't really be added because yeah. of yeah. commercialism. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's the difference between <clears throat> clothes and fashion mm. and often a distinction that gets blurred, which mm. is clothes are there for the utility. Yeah, practical. They serve yeah. a practical element mm -hmm. of covering the human form mm -hmm. and serving various practical elements of like waterproofing or seasonal changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fashion is that elevation of clothes into the narrative like you're talking about there. Mm. And, and fashion without narrative is where it gets really yeah, boring exactly. and where we see those runways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you think, again, that's something that perhaps lots of the big houses have missed with some recent appointments Great. is when one speaks about, I was speaking about this with Jeannie and we speak about it a lot. Mm. Um, when we're speaking about diversity, we're not just speaking about diversity in terms of like how it looks, but also in terms of the narratives the that are contributed, yeah, exactly. and stories that are added. Exactly. And if you're trying to, trying to sell ultimately mm -hmm. a product which is mm -hmm. evocative of emotion mm -hmm. and which yeah. entices your consumer, 
the same people mm -hmm. making similar clothes. Yeah. Doesn't mean really doing it's it. Boring. Really no, do it's boring. It's not. It's so it's so important. I think recently I've been like, I planned loads of trips this year, just to kind of even myself mm -hmm. break down the westernized mindset that I have mm -hmm. as a person, yeah. <laughs> because obviously I'm born here, but I'm Jamaican. But still, it's like I'm trying to, you know test my creativity to just branch out of this mindset of just westernized, westernized civilization because it's so important to just go back to, you know, like my roots and see where I've come from and get inspired by, you know, I was in Ghana recently and mm. there was just so much life out there, you know, that I just was so inspired by and it's just refreshing to just kind of, yeah, break down, you know, those mindsets that you might have. Um, that's why, yeah, I just, it's, it's so important for houses to start appointing people from different backgrounds and because, yeah, yeah everyone's story, everyone has a unique story and they have a point of view and they have something to say. And I think Simone has done such a good job with just honing in on what she has to say, what she's bringing to the table, because like you say, we know what we're going to get with Simone, but then at the same time we don't because she still <laughs> just like revives this. Yeah freshness but yeah. we see her point of view you know and it's such yeah, a keep track of her mm. I think that's the big thing it, it <clears throat> it's continues her consumer it, it, mm. there was sort of this long told fallacy in fashion emerging from the 50s and 60s of the, mm. the conservatism of the consumer mm. wanting to always know what's going to happen mm. and I think especially execs and the sort of people who govern lots of these big fashion houses have thought that that's the mentality to keep up, but we yeah. obviously know that consumers like variety and narrative and change in designers like Simone Stand as a testament mm. to that. Mm. Um, and it's really important. And she fuses so many different motifs across her yeah. sort of dual identity, obviously, because yeah. she's both Irish and of Chinese descent. Yes. And we see that, that cross-pollination in her designs mm -hmm. and worked in so beautifully. Yeah. And she's a designer operating in London. Yeah. And I think Simone just stands as testament to, to how well, not only that can be done, but also how well that can sell mm -hmm. to the naysayers who pretend Very true. that it can't be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's done a great job of, you know, bringing out wearable clothing mm. and then obviously sticking to the fantasy and mm -hmm. the, you know, imagination of this yeah. whole, you know, fashion world. You are, as a designer, obviously a big, like you say, a big part of it is a portrayal of yourself and a portrayal of narratives and, and heritage. Do you feel like you see designers like Simone echoing that? Do you see it in your own designs? How does it inform your own process? Echoing narrative and echoing storytelling. Yeah. Um, in my own process, inevitably, yes. I mean, a lot of my work is sort of um, a look at my own, essentially the things that I've learned yeah. uh, looking back at my own background, coming from Jamaica, growing up in the Cayman Islands, and now having been in London for 10, 12 plus years. Um, it's, but the way that I, I sort of like look at my background is I'm always looking at the things that I've experienced uh, mm -hmm. that other people can relate to. It's never mm -hmm. just like autobiographical. Mm -hmm. It's autobiographical because my experiences relate to other people's experiences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so when I'm looking at things like, oh, actually, so th essentially the, this sort of like marrying of London Cayman and, and, and Jamaica is really essentially what I present as my work. It's something mm -hmm. that inevitably feels like a, a harmonious marriage of these three stories. Yeah. And when I was growing up, I was never only surrounded by people who look like me. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up in Jamaica, it was always like Chinese Jamaicans, Indian mm -hmm. Jamaicans. Um, even in my own family, there's quite a complex sort of diversity that exists within these spaces. And the same when I moved to the Cayman Islands, I was surrounded by Hondurans, Latinos, mm -hmm. uh, Caymanians, other Jamaicans, um, British, Americans. And obviously now, having lived in London, it's, a, it's an extremely multicultural space. Mm. Um, so it's always like looking at my experiences to tell a story that isn't about me, but about sort of people that I've met and stories that I've picked up and yeah. um, ways that you, and I think that is one of the reasons why diversity is so important mm. because otherwise if you just have the same story from the same point of view, then you're only gonna get the same story. Yeah. 
Yeah, and people want to be seen. They want to be able to relate. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And yeah. subsequently only entice the same sort of consumer mm -hmm. as well, because when yeah, you're just precisely. presenting the same thing... Yeah. But also consumers are not as sort of simple as we think that they are, you know. Yeah. Um, people want to be interested. People want to be able to sort of buy into something that they haven't seen before or mm -hmm. a way of thinking about clothes or fashion or identity that has sort of opened up something mm -hmm. new mm -hmm. um, in them. It's as much as we mostly just wear t-shirts and jeans, we actually, I think that's just a, a happenstance of the society that we found ourselves in. Yeah. Not because we really solely only desire to wear t-shirts and jeans. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. 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 Consumers, yeah. in a way, are like more discerning than the industry gives them mm. credit for, I think. Mm. And I think, again, that's something that brings back to this Simone collection, where we're talking about the fact that she has fused that so well, and it feels like her consumers can pick up this collection yeah. Yeah. and enjoy it and look at it, but it still feels reminiscent mm. of Jean-Paul. It still feels respectful yeah. to him as a designer. Mm -hmm. Do we think other designers did it? as well, because obviously we've had Hyde Ackman, uh, Olivier Roussien, Chitose Abbe, um, Julian de Senna. We've had quite a fair few. Mm. I think it's hard to ask that question specifically yeah. because I don't want anyone who is coming into this position to do it like anybody else. Yeah, I think I want everybody yeah. to do them in your own way. way. I, I, it's exciting to see what people come up with you know, it, yeah. what they bring to the table and each collection the last couple of seasons you can see how different they are but mm. you can obviously see the elements of Gautier throughout the running mm. thread it's it is just exciting to see what's the best bit really That's isn't it, it? like mm -hmm. how are each of them going to tackle the moment? yeah how are each of them going to tackle the yeah. like tattooing mm -hmm. code how are each mm -hmm. of them going to tackle the corsetry mm -hmm. like also, no two of them are going to do it the same way right yeah yeah, yeah it's nice to see like all these different souls yeah. channeling through the same vessel. Yeah. 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 Um, but I feel like her spirit is really coming out in mm. this one specifically. Because yeah. mm. if you look at this, is Julian de Senna, isn't it, for mm. Jean Paul Gaultier? Yeah. yeah. Um, it does feel much more perhaps what one thinks when one thinks of Jean Paul Gaultier. Yeah. Yeah. We've got the de Senna motifs in terms of like yeah, the I love mesh, this. like he does oh, yeah. at Raban and stuff mm. like that, but they're very much, I mean, that feels very Gaultier, and, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the tartan and mm -hmm. sort of the um, mismatched um, alignment of the silhouette and stuff like that. But mm. like we say, that's what's refreshing about the Simone because it is out, it's slightly out of left field. It mm -hmm. feels very her, it feels unpredictable. Mm -hmm. It's a bit more intellectual. You know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I love that. Yeah, I think, yeah. And design that is intellectualised Intellectual. is really important because mm -hmm. fashion so often, and especially as we head into this economy, gets labelled as superficial or mm -hmm. surface-based, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it functions from a really crucial perspective, not yeah. only substantiating an entire creative and global industry, yeah. but also just as an intellectual app output. Mm -hmm. And it is often the most accessible form of very unaccessible yeah. things like yeah. high literature, high art, mm -hmm. religion, mm -hmm. right. theology, things that otherwise are actually really difficult to materialize. Mm -hmm. We see come through on yeah, a runway and get. Mm. Yeah. Um, who would we love to see next? Hmm, question. Good I know. question. I think, I think looking at the, the roster we've had so far, mm. he did pick designers who came to the role with a very distinctive design code and mm -hmm. codex, like index mm -hmm. of their own. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be a shame to almost bring in a designer who didn't have that. Yeah. You, you'd, oh, you'd you need to find someone totally. else who really like, yeah. you'd be able to yeah. see their work yeah. from a mile away. So it needs to be someone, so, you know, it Possibly can't be like, like a designer who's presented three seasons because you're saying there needs to be a DNA that needs to be, not yeah. be swallowed by yeah. Jean Paul. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And exactly. I think when you, the, the fact that what this is, 14 years mm. since she graduated. I mean, that's a long time mm. to mm. form a certain, you know, ident visual identity. Mm. Mm. Um, and she's done it really consistently. Mm. And so, yeah, it would be difficult to know. 
it's hard to think of who yeah. next. <laughs> because obviously that's what they're thinking about now. Someone's having a cigarette out a window in a Jean Paul Gaultier yeah, office. Really? Like, yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's like the big discussion now yeah. will be yeah. who do they, you know, do they take Daniel Roseberry from Scaparelli for example? Because Jonathan. that's easy. Or, or Jonathan. like Jonathan yeah. Anderson. Do they go for someone like Guo Pei, actually, mm. who mm. has her own huge identity and obviously, yeah. you know, within China is probably the best couturier yeah. that exists, but isn't part of the Chambre Syndicale de l'Octure for a whole host of reasons because you have to have an atelier based in Paris mm. which is, seems really really archaic at this point mm. um, you know that will be the discussion about who we have next and of course I, you know we'll see these designs probably in three months for the Met Gala Mm -hmm. right. Oh, definitely. The exactly. thing is like sleeping yeah, beauty it's will. all about reawakened will. houses mm -hmm. reawakened design yeah Who's wearing what? I mean, who would we put who in? Georgia, obviously you're a stylist. Do you have any? Yes. Not, 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 not for you to give away your whole business. <laughs> 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 you know, the coming no, I'm not going to give you all my bright ideas. Um, I actually was thinking uh, Billie Eilish yeah. would look fab in some of these pieces. Yeah. Um, she would look gorgeous just because you know, it'd show and her physique and yeah, yeah, exactly. Look 17, she'd look great in. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then maybe I'd love to see, what else would I love to see? I feel like we'll have like Tracy Ellis Ross or something. Tracy, yeah, yeah exactly. Somebody super incredible. iconic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Also, where was Rosamund Pike? I'm sorry. I know, yeah, yeah, I you were saying before, <laughs> Rosamund. Like the front row, I haven't seen that much coverage on the front row, except that we had um, Amelia Dime Oldenburg. Yes. Amelia. Kylie Jenner. Mm -hmm. yes. And Kelly um, Oh my god, we've just been speaking about Kelly, her. It's Kelly, Kelly, Rutherford. Kelly Rutherford. And Amanda Lear. Yeah. And also down the road was like uh, Pink Panthers, I saw. Yeah, oh, that was Pink Panthers there. Yeah. That's that cool. Be sure. Pink Panthers would oh, be cute. Major. Wei Wei was yeah. there. Yeah. She's the stalwart so of the Simone team. Mm. Yeah, they do um, look stunned, don't they? Yeah, but I do feel like Rosamond. Rosamond deserves. Yeah, she, she yeah. should have. And I, I, I would not be surprised okay. if we saw her in at least one of these looks at some point. Mm. Mm. Do you know who I did actually become obsessed with? I um, went to the cinema with my little nieces and took them to see the new Mean Girls. And Renee Rapp is actually iconic. Yeah. I would love to see her in this. She's so cool. She'd look good. She's got such a great personality. Yeah, yeah, she would look amazing in some of these pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually talking about it, it's a designer like. I just saw Walter Van Buren Donk or something like that. Yeah, that's quite a good one to go for because true. they are so yes. subversive. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They have such, I mean, very, very you know, like true. Ray Kawakubo is definitely not going to do it because yeah. like you'd She's literally, she, she would, no, it's just a no. Yeah. But like someone like Walter Van Buren Donk has, yeah. and also, you know, majority cheeky. menswear. He's cheeky. Yeah. He's cheeky. He uses it's innuendo. Fun. He uses yeah. humour. He uses yeah. like, mm -hmm. that. that's maybe the one thing I feel like that's we've good one. had yeah. almost missing from the, the designer lineup so far, and I know that some of them, namely like Glenn Martins and even Simone, there are there's a tiny twinge of cheekiness, but mm. John Paul Gotti is a funny man. Yeah. Like yeah. he's so funny. <laughs> yeah. I was watching really. Euro Trash this week, <laughs> and it's so silly, and yeah. it's all yeah. tongue in cheek, and it's yeah. all innuendo, it's all euphemism, and mm -hmm. I feel like we are missing a sense of humour yeah. maybe. Not but that it's lacking, but just that mm. I would want to see that. But the thing Walter is, there's good. not that many designers that can give you humour. No. Walter could, yeah. I feel. Yeah. Walter can, because yeah. actually yes. they yeah, speak can. in a very similar language. Yes. Mm. Uh, Speaking uh, of but language. there's not a, a, a lot of designers that, mm. that can do that and that do it successfully. Yeah. Yeah. And do they're you, contemporaries as well. Mm. Do you feel like, when we're talking about humour as well, I started to think about how Gautier shows the casting you know, and how the models would walk down the runway. And mm. I feel like that, there's been a bit of that that's been missing, bringing like these, having these characters Actuality, actually. Yeah. Like I haven't seen any like characters or in like individuals, mm. you know, bringing the clothes to, yeah, life, to life in a yeah. sense. Um, that's what I feel is, is missing. Um, Lana Del Rey would be good yeah. in, in the- Lana yeah, Del Rey would be a so nice. True. Lana Del Rey would look Oh my gosh, you should have kept that one on like- Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was her actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, where yeah. is she? Yeah. <laughs> no, she would be. Um, the yeah. duality of fashion needing to be funny mm. is actually yeah. really important. Mm, it doesn't totally. necessarily need to be funny, but mm. that like duality of humour and 
Yeah. Hmm. Seriousness hmm. reference. It's really important. Yeah, because yeah, it need has all been camp. serious. We need camp we sometimes. Do. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also talking about the Met, I still love the camp theme from the Met Gala. Yeah. You know what I mean? I that, was that was one the of the best. best. Yeah. Camp and China through the looking yeah, glass. Absolutely. I think we're just two that were executed yeah. really well. Yeah, really well. And we will definitely see these looks on mm -hmm. Met. Oh yeah. Met oh yeah, we will for in sure. Literally, I mean what now it's three months, first Monday yeah. in May. Mm-hmm. Yeah. on buzzers. And it's sponsored by TikTok, <laughs> yeah. so oh my God. get ready for oh God. Get, <laughs> get ready for an envelope. <laughs> we're definitely gonna see someone in um look I think it was look seven. And I think it's um lace in resin and then coated in mm. metal. Wow. Like, yeah, it's red. beautiful. Oh, Someone's boy. definitely going to have that. That is incredible. Stunning. Yeah. And the menswear too. We're definitely going to see the menswear. Yeah, she last. could have, yeah. That's well. such a nice balance as well. We're off Dior a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I was just about yeah, to say definitely. that. Yeah. And I, I mean, the conical bras as well, we were speaking about this before, but mm -hmm. it, it's another thing where when you look first at this, you do identify, yes, that's Jean-Paul Gaultier, mm -hmm. but you do also think, almost simultaneously, it's Simone. Mm -hmm. You don't just yeah, it's think true. that's Jean-Paul. No, you don't. Because she's, because it's such, it, it's been placed in a way that it, it kind of melts onto the silhouette of this, yeah. mm. this piece. It it's not so overt. Uh, it's not too yeah. aggressive. This it's could also be Schiaparelli. This could also be Dior. Like That's it true. feels actually quite subtle. Yeah. Even it's a literal cone bra sticking mm -hmm. out the front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the look I was making reference to when I was mm. saying, when I look at it, I know that she's making reference to him, but I also think of, um, previous looks from her previous collections where it had that, those really big warped petals mm. on the chest. Yeah. Mm. And I um, think that's a nice dance of it. Mm. Before we sort of start to wrap up, mm. does anyone have any looks where they're like, I love this, or I really want to talk about this, or there's anything that I really think is really special about any of these. I feel like we've covered most of yeah, them. Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, that floral the one, stems, the black. Yeah. yeah, that mm. reminded me a lot of Claire White Keller for Givenchy, with mm. the flowers coming out, yeah. and things like that. But just really beautiful, mm. just really well done. Yeah, she's done. It also makes job. me think about acupuncture for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And Louise Bourgeois. Yeah. The, the yeah, sort of flex of red <laughs> paint. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I also really love the volume in the collection. I Me think too. That's I love the volume really too. Good at, um, draping. Like mm. this look and the next look yes, after. Yeah. That one wow. is always yeah. so beautiful. You can't really see it in image because yeah, it's, it's just black one. and it, you lose all of the details. Mm. But that's been draped so beautifully and, yeah. and sensually. Yeah. Mm. Um, Feels almost like Grecian, ancient yeah. Greek. There was yeah, another it dress, of I think. Uh, she does yeah, her dress, talking about like ancient Grecian, yeah. where it just fuses well. Mm -hmm. And I think another thing to keep in mind with couture is it doesn't always photograph or video mm -hmm. that well mm -hmm. no. versus in person. Mm -hmm. These are made to be worn by private clients mm -hmm. in you know, not like in their homes, they're not having their no. omelets wearing Chanel, but like, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe they are actually. <laughs> no. um, but, you know, these are made for people to wear mm. in person and to be seen in person and to be viewed in person. Yeah. They're not necessarily made yeah. to be captured on camera mm. inherently. So yeah. with collections like this, where there's perhaps less kind of embroidery or yeah. gold or yeah. that we think about as being a sign of couture, like mm. Armani Privé, for example, mm. where like you can't turn without seeing a sparkle. Yeah. Um, seeing this collection is one that should be, I guess, seen in person. Not that I will ever see it in person because it will probably go to Paris and then never be seen again. Yeah. But it is one of those collections where I feel like when you look at the details on somewhere like Vogue Runway, mm -hmm. you start to just get more and more and more from it. Yeah, definitely. definitely. The definitely. more you look is the more you get. Yeah. And something else I really liked so um, on one of those looks where the model had on a bralette and a, the black skirt. Oh, was that with the embroidery um, on the? Yes, yeah. that is stunning. But mm. I also love the the like old, the reference to the gloves, but mm. they're made yeah. with the petals on mm. the arms. And I also found that I know she loves to do this, have this see-through element in the clothes. But I think in some of the looks in the beginning they, they had like a translucence to them yeah where it, it, it's see-through but you're not necessarily seeing like the nipple or the underwear yeah. mm. and like a perspex almost do we think That's that awesome. was a nod to the like classic jean-paul gaultier mesh tops like yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Sure. Like with mesh the little cutout for the first look 
with the little cutouts on the triangles you know, yeah. and the tattoo. I feel like yeah. surely that's. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah that's you know, right. Simone's been on Vestier yeah. Collective because yeah. those have been everywhere. <laughs> <Yeah. No. laughs> um, can we have our AI question? I um, should I read it at the same time? Are we? Yeah. Um, OK, so do you think the collection was a successful fusion of the two designers' aesthetics? If so, which piece stood out the most? I feel like we've covered we've this covered a lot, that, but were there yeah. pieces that felt particularly poignant in terms of being the fusion of the DNA? I think the yes. look that you mentioned, yeah. Molly, the yeah. ribbon, you know. The man, I think yeah. that yeah. look yeah. and the, um, the corset mm -hmm. with yeah. the... With the bull, yeah. yeah. And I think those two in particular yeah. like, were really because they it's were so stripped clear. down mm -hmm. and yeah. to the reference, but in a way that was so subtle, subtle. and beautiful. Yeah. Agreed. In a way, you're looking for yes, a look or a piece that, if you saw totally out of context, mm -hmm. you would be left wondering, mm -hmm. like, is that Simona? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think the hats. Yeah, the hats. The hats special, yeah. Like they Agreed. really. I, again, we discussed this before, Especially but I, that, yeah, the ballet, yeah. the ballet slipper, like corsetry one. That could mm. be Simone or John. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Like, yeah. John, yeah. John, John. John. Um, John. That could be. That could be one or the other. Like if I saw it in either, if I saw that in a vintage store and someone was like in like Eden Vintage yeah. or something, and it was old John, Jean Paul Gaultier, I would yeah. believe it. If I saw it in Simone's store on Mount Street, I would also likewise believe, believe it. it. It would fit seamlessly with either. Yeah, it would. Visual, yeah. Which I think is really. Also, from a stylist's perspective, quite interesting, I suppose, because it can kind of be pulled and lifted and used. Totally. For things. And yeah. also, yeah. as the, so the one of the only two products to come out um, that are available for purchase, actually very mm -hmm. successful. That it yeah. sits mm -hmm. so comfortably within those two yeah. um, designer spaces. Yeah. And I, I don't know if we noticed, but there aren't as many pearls as usual. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And pearl, you know, that's such yeah, a distinctive her thing. thing for her. I mean, they're in the shoes, mm. of course. Yeah. And it's like and a ring, yeah. which I think you is did. really yeah. fun. Yeah, but it's subtle. Sexy with the it's subtle. Yeah. Hair see through. So, yeah. in a way, a nod to Gautier's like nautical. Mm. It feels mermaidy. It, it does. feels like yeah. Yeah. treasures of the sea mm -hmm. rather than, especially, it has almost like a mermaid bra, the yeah. slip. Yeah, and even when I look at the the bras, actually, I think of um, clams, mm. like things that would have pearls in them in the mm. through the shape like the they are, in their crystals. Mm. Mm. Or... Mm. Okay, so any closing remarks before we wrap up? Love, hate, love, 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 love. love. Good job, Simone. Yeah, you know, it's incredible. incredible. Could it have been any better? Could there have been anything that? we would have liked to have seen more of? Would we have liked to have seen... I know it's couture, so normally we don't get accessories. Would we have liked to have seen a bag or mm, I don't know, models I don't know exactly walking what I differently from, yeah, or I a think bit it's of just, old? Yeah, for me, it's maybe like the casting or characters, but then at yeah, the same yeah. time, I don't know if that's necessarily sure. directly at Simone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just in general, throughout... How much the, does she have? Yeah, that? well, you know, Glenn Martins was a lookbook, Hyder was a lookbook, mm. but I want to... You know, maybe it might be something in the next collection that mm. whoever is to do it, they consider having these characters come to life. And maybe that's Walter's job. Mm. <laughs> Are we dreaming that? <laughs> so by the way, if that happens, we expect to yeah, be right? yeah, I want my consultant fee. <laughs> I, think, I think, you know, pearl accessories wouldn't hurt. But yeah. <laughs> because I love when she, she does the pearls. But I think mm. it's very successful without it. It's just me yeah. being greedy. But I think, if, I think if there's anything else to add, it would have maybe steered, then steered it in a more of a direction of where it would have gone 70, 30, Jean mm. or mm. Simone. I think if there was any other layer, it would have steered it off into a direction where it would have been more than one than the other. Whereas this is like the perfect middle ground and meeting point. Feels like exactly what I was hoping to and expecting yeah. to see mm. in the right way. Yeah, agreed. Okay, well, uh, thank you to all the panelists and for all of those watching, obviously our consensus was that we loved it, but <laughs> reach your own decision. Um, for more extensive Fashion Week coverage, be sure to visit showstudio.com, and if you're watching via Show Studios YouTube, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>